Hi, I'm Sam Ryan, and this is AKC Live, bringing you the latest dog news and entertainment from the American Kennel Club. As we begin in St. Charles, Missouri, that's where the Poodle Club of America held its 86th annual National Specialty Show from April 12th through the 20th. Now, this year, the best of variety winners are Toy Poodle. It was Charlie. For the Miniature Poodle, how about Delta? Standard Poodle went to Maru. Now these three variety winners competed for Best of Breed, which was awarded to the Standard Poodle Maru. I've always upland hunted with my dog, and uh, it's really nice that the AKC added the poodles to the Spaniel program. We're having a blast, having a really fun time doing the, the hunt test today. You know, part of the show this year is the Spaniel Hunt Test at the Poodle Club of America. Hunting tests are just for that, evaluating a dog's hunting abilities. Now, poodles have been used as flushing dogs for centuries, the same job that Spaniels were bred to do. Poodles were first allowed into the Spaniel Hunt Test just last year. Well, sad news from overseas. Her Majesty the Queen has lost her royal pet. Willow was the last of the Pembroke Welsh Corgis bred by the Queen. For more than 80 years, Her Majesty has been surrounded by Corgis, 30 of them in all. Willow was the 14th generation descendant from Susan, a Corgi gifted to the then Princess Elizabeth on her 18th birthday back in 1944 and who accompanied the Queen on her honeymoon. The Queen is credited with the resurgence of the Corgi popularity, especially after the breed was featured in the popular Netflix series The Crown. The Queen's preference was for the Red Corgis. In other news from overseas, the Dackel Museum opened last month in Passau, Germany. It's a museum devoted to the Dachshund, with more than 4,500 paintings, books, statues, and porcelain wares. If you have a love for anything Dachshund, this is a museum is a must for you. The Dackel Museum grew out of its founder's passion for the sausage dog, a dog short on the legs but big on character, and a museum rule, dogs are welcome. Dachshunds were bred in the Middle Ages to flush badgers out of their burrows. They are the 13th most popular dog breed in America. To learn about one of our own canine hidden treasures that lives at the American Kennel Club headquarters, here's In the Dog House with Bud Bacone. Hi, I'm Bud Bacone in the Dog House here at AKC headquarters. The story I'm working on today is about a great show dog of the early 1950s. His name was Storm, and he was a Doberman Pinscher owned by Len and Shirley Carey, a back-to-back -back Westminster champion. He won Westminster in 1952 and in 1953, a very rarely achieved milestone for any great show dog. One of the most colorful aspects of the Carey collection here at the archives is this collection of best in show ribbons won by Storm. The interesting thing about Storm was that he had an arch rival, a boxer by the name of Bangaway. He came out of the West. He was the first dog to win Westminster, bred west of the Mississippi, and he won Westminster in 1951. Storm answered by winning in 1952, and then just to put a little exclamation point on it, he won it again in 1953. What made this rivalry possible was the advances that were happening in the United States in several different fields that made the country suddenly a little smaller. There was the building of the interstate highway system, the advent of jet travel, network television, all happening right after World War II. Television at its finest. All of these things made it possible for a great champion like Bangaway to come out from California and compete on the East Coast and become a nationwide celebrity just like Storm, who was based in Connecticut. The true sign of greatness for any champion is not just what they did in the ring, but what they did when nobody was looking. <laughs> and by that I mean breeding. Storm did his bit for dog kind by siring hundreds of puppies, many of them top show champions in their own right. Len Carey was an advertising man. He was a vice president in a, in a prestigious advertising firm in here in New York City during what we now call the Mad Men era. Len Carey is one of the models that uh, the character of Don Draper in Mad Men was based on. We also talked about a deeper bond 
with the product. His agency had the big Lucky Strike cigarette account, and he kind of parlayed that into this little uh, endorsement deal here with his wife and with Storm. What does a Doberman Pinscher have to do with cigarette sales? Absolutely nothing. Cigarette ads in those days were often about absolutely nothing because they didn't want to talk about the product, so they sold a lifestyle. The carries out in Costco, well off, a great dog, was the kind of lifestyle that was being sold to Americans in the 1950s. It's a fascinating story that ties in with the history of so many different industries, including television, the advertising industry, the history of uh, jet travel in the United States. Honey, this is wonderful. I sure think of everything. Wherever there's people doing something interesting, you can bet there's a dog by their side. This is Bud Bacone in the doghouse. I'll see you next time. In AKC Sports News, we're bringing you the top 10 confirmation dog rankings this month. What does it take to be the top dog? AKC top dog rankings are calculated every month at the end of the year. The race for the number one dog is determined. This is how it works. A dog gets one point for every dog it defeats at a dog show. As a dog advances through the breed, group, and best in show competitions, he will accumulate more points. The best in show winner receives the most points for the day because he defeated all the other dogs at that show. It starts at the breed level. Let's say the dog that wins best of breed in Bulldogs defeated 19 other Bulldogs. That winner then receives 19 points. Also, that best of breed winner advances to the group competition. That same Bulldog now competes in the non-sporting group. If the Bulldog wins the group, he gets a point for every dog in the non-sporting group that he defeats. If there are 100 dogs from the non-sporting group shown that day, the Bulldog receives 99 points. Since the Bulldog was the winner of the non-sporting group, he will now compete for best in show. If the Bulldog goes best in show, he will get a point for every dog that was shown at the dog show from every group. So, if the total number of dogs shown that day is 1,000, the Bulldog will receive 999 points. Rankings are calculated at each level of a dog show. There will be rankings for the top dogs in each breed, each group, and the top dogs among all breeds. When we talk about the top 10 dogs all breeds, we are talking about the top dogs in the country. Last year, the number one dog in America finished the year with 69 best in shows, 130 group wins, and over 75,000 points. Wow, that's a lot of ribbons. Now that we know how the system works, let's look at the current top 10 starting with number 10. Sol, a pointer from Milaca, Minnesota. Number nine from Hampton, Massachusetts. It's a Sussex Spaniel named Bean. Number eight from Chatham, New Jersey, an old English sheepdog named Sophia. To number seven we go from Flower Mound, Texas is a boxer known as Wilma. How about number six from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, a pug named Biggie. Number five from Colorado Springs, Colorado, another old English sheepdog called Elsa. Number four from Santa Barbara, California, it's Princeton, a French bulldog. The number three dog in the country is Nick, an Akita from Gilroy, California. Number two dog in the country from Westfield, Massachusetts is the American Staffordshire Terrier named Louie. And the number one dog this month is a black cocker spaniel from Knoxville, Tennessee, called Grant. And we have Grant's breeder, owner, and handler joining us today. Linda Pitts, welcome. Thank you for joining us. No, thanks for having me. First of all, congratulations. And what has it taken to get to number one so early in Grant's career? Um, well, it's, it's just hard work. There's really no secret. You just get out there and try to do your best every single day, go to a lot of dog shows, keep the dog healthy, and keep it interested and keep yourself healthy too. Now you've had other top dogs before. How is this one different? Um, this one, is the last top dog that I had was my Pooley, which ended up being a house pet. And uh, this one is a little bit, not quite as rambunctious as the other one. And he's also something that I bred. So I have a lot of personal investment in it because it's my breeding program that I've been involved with for 25 years. You know, you talked about the Pooley, Preston the Pooley. That was, Preston was the winner of the 2016 AKC National Championship, yeah. also competed uh, for Best in Show in 2017. What was it about Preston, who you said is a house pet now? What, what made Preston so special? Uh, Preston was 125% every time he walked into the ring. He was a great ambassador for the breed, and uh, he was just 
a wonderful, wonderful dog. He's now back in Australia with his owners and having a great life, I'm sure. So we Preston was in Best in Show in the 2017 AKC National Championship. The winner yeah. of that Best in Show was Stryker the Ass Cop, Cocker Spaniel, claimed Best in Show. And, and Stryker was handled by your husband, Mike. So what is it like when you guys are competing directly against one another? We've been competing against each other for so long, it, we don't even think about it anymore. We just try to do the best job for each client, and they all trust us. We have great clients, and that's really what keeps you going when you've been doing it as long as we have. You know, back to Grant and congratulations on Grant. What are you looking forward to with Grant for the rest of this year? Um, we just hope that he can do as much as he can possibly do. Um, he's got a great team of owners, and we think he's a really good example of the breed. He's just a beautiful Cocker Spaniel with a lot of positive things going for him. So we hope that he can maintain his ranking, sporting dog ranking, and uh, everybody else is out there trying. There's a lot of good dogs, so we just give it our best shot and hope that it works out. Linda Pitts, congratulations, and thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Mother's Day is right around the corner, so what's the perfect gift for the dog-loving mom out there? Sherelle Starr helps us out with some ideas. Hey, it's Sherelle Starr here, and I am at the famous Dogwood Tree at Shakespeare Garden in Central Park. I'm actually here today to show you some cute gift ideas for the dog-loving mom in your life. Let's check them out. And the first item we have for mom is this embroidered t-shirt. You can get it in about 150 different breeds, so you can get her the breed of her choice, whatever is her favorite. Uh, and it also is available in five different colors, so any color that your mom loves, you can probably get in this shirt. You can get it at shopakc.org. And what better way to celebrate mom than by getting her a great way to drink her morning cup of coffee. We've got these two mugs here from shopakc.org. So with this one, you can actually get whichever breed your mom will love right on the mug, and you can choose from five different nature backgrounds. And with this one, you can also get her the breed of dog she loves right on the mug so she can stare at her favorite, favorite breed of dog as she drinks her coffee in the morning. They come in an 11 and 15 ounce options. Why not get your mom something that she can keep close to her heart forever? From Paul Byrne Jewelry, you can actually get a necklace of your mom's dog made especially for her. Essentially, all you do is send in a photo of the dog as a portrait, and they will turn it into a beautiful necklace like this. It's a custom cutout of the dog's ears from the portrait, and it, you can either get it in a necklace as well as a bracelet charm. It's a custom piece she can wear forever. So if your mom is anything like my mom, she really loves to cook. So you can get her a cutting board with her favorite breed right on there. It comes in, in about 150 different breed options and you can actually cut right on the board to cut vegetables and things like that or use it as a serving platter when guests come over. This is hand washable and it's made from tempered glass. So for more gift ideas, check out akc.org and happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful moms out there from American Kennel Club. And now a fact about Mother's Day, a popular gift is a plant or flowers, but some plants are toxic to dogs, including the lily, ivy, and oleander. If you believe your animal is ill or may have ingested a poisonous substance, contact either your local veterinarian or the Animal Poison Control Center. May 1st was National Purebred Dog Day, a day that celebrates the purpose and diversity of the purebred dog. With us is the creator of this day, Susie Zeremy, to tell us a little bit more. So you created this holiday. Can you tell me a little bit about how that came about, Susie? Um, I'm a writer by profession, and in the course of research for an article, I wanted to know when National Purebred Dog Day was and couldn't find evidence of it. And this was the height of the adopt own shop and anti-breeder, anti-purebred dog movement. In a half, I threw up a Facebook page, named it, picked a day, and then forgot about it because I was on deadline. A few days later, I remembered, oh yeah, I did that. So I went back and was astonished to find 3,000 people on it. Clearly it was resonating. And when it hit 20,000 people, I thought, the Facebook page is not going to be enough. So I launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund the building of a website and completed that. And then I thought, you know, it's gonna need teeth if you're gonna call something a national holiday. So I wrote a resolution and thank God for the AKC that helped me tweak it into legalese. Phil Guidry over at the legislative department did that, uh, introduced it to the state of Colorado, got it passed, and here we are. What are your goals for the, for the day, for the I, holiday? I want it to become mainstream. I want 
And I saw evidence of that yesterday, and I thought we saw real progress when I saw realtors and businesses using it. Clearly, they didn't realize what they'd fallen into, but confessed that they saw everybody else doing it, so went along with, hey, happy National Purebred Dog Day. And that is a good direction, I believe, when people start falling in line, start using it. I don't want people to think twice about it. I want them to realize it's National Purebred Dog Day. And then open the door to have dialogue about what responsible dog ownership looks like. I never intended for it to be perceived as a line in the sand, purebred dog or nothing. What I want is for people to realize that they have choices. If that choice is a mixed breed or a shelter dog, knock yourself out, do your homework, do right by the dog. But I also want respect given to the person who prefers predictability in their dog and chooses to get it from a heritage breeder who health checks and socializes and does their homework and vets the people buying their dogs, person who creates the next generation of that breed. I wanted to bring balance back to this conversation. Do you have any suggestions for how people can celebrate or observe National Purebred Dog Day and get the word out? Um, I want people to get out on May 1st, get out and be seen with their dog, open the dialogue, open the conversation, know about the history of their breed because these are really little museum pieces with the pulse. They reflect the legacy of people and cultures that created them for a reason. And I want them to be able to share that with others on May 1st. And eventually, hopefully, that will permeate into other days out of the year to where we won't even think twice about it. It will just be, oh, you have a mixed breed, great. I have a purebred dog, great. I want to remove the stigma that's been put there by others, not us. Susie Zeremy, thank you so much for your time and for your insight. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Good talking with you, Sam. AKC TV is currently working on a short documentary about the dachshund for our Meet the Breed series. So we're in need of quality dachshund footage. Send in your video of these dogs doing their short on legs but big on character thing. We'd love to see it and we'll try to include it. Upload your footage at akc.tv slash submit. And if using your cell phone, hold it this way to film your dog. Got it? Go to AKC TV for more dog news and entertainment. We have more stories covering the Peach Blossom Cluster. And don't miss our Disneyland for Dogs segment featuring some of the great events from the Peach Blossom Cluster. Go to AKC TV and click events. It's all on AKC TV. But before we go, we leave you with a good dog moment of the week. Meet Boeing, owned by Mike Willicket. Learning about life's ups and downs. If you've got a good dog moment, send it to akc.tv slash submit. We'll be back in two weeks. I'm Sam Ryan. Thanks for watching AKC Live. It's good dog TV.